Hey everybody! So today we're going to talk about Juno in the natal chart, kind of what she means. I'm not going to go too much into the mythology because that would be really long, but she was the, she was the wife of Jupiter. Um, that's who she was. <laughs> um, that relationship was kind of not that great. <laughs> um, but regardless of that, she does represent, um, marriage unions, partnerships, fidelity or infidelity, um, all of these kinds of things are what she, also beauty and, um, female sexuality. She does represent that too. Um, so it's an interesting thing to pull, and then it's, it's an interesting one of the goddess asteroids to pull in the natal chart. The other ones are um, Ceres, Investa, and Pallas. But um, let me show you what Juno, what the glyph for Juno will look like. I'll, uh, I'll show you on my chart, just because I have the authority to show my chart <laughs> and the clearance. Okay, so down there at three degrees, sorry, in, not three degrees, duh, in the third house in Aquarius, at 29 degrees, you'll see the little thing that looks like an asterisk with a cross. That's Juno. And so Juno can show, <clears throat> Juno shows, Juno can show a kind of, it can show a couple things. She can show a couple things. She can show what kind of relationships you need. Not necessarily what you want, but what you need. <laughs> And she can also, or what you think you, not necessarily what you think you want, but you need. <clears throat> She's more about what you, what you need in this way. And she can also show, um, and, and, you know, in some charts, it can be what you want to. In some, in, in some, in some charts, it is what you want. But I have found that sometimes it's more about what you actually need in, in relationships. Um... Now, I generally, you can look, I, I keep the, I keep the orbs pretty tight with this when looking at Juno, you know, um, you can look at the, you can look at all, I mean, you can look at whatever aspects you want. They're big enough. She's a big enough asteroid to where I do think I would, I would, I would look at, um, I would look at oppositions and squares, trine, sextiles, conjunctions, king kunks. I, I would look at all those aspects with her. Um, I would keep the orbs tighter though. Um, I feel like three degrees applying or separating is probably good. And, um, you know, if she's, you know, she can show things like, um, she can show things like the propensity towards fidelity or infidelity. This can be with yourself. This can also be what you might attract, <laughs> you know, what you, what kind of partner you might have in terms of that. Um, if, if Juno is, uh, if Juno is making a lot of, well, and you know, this isn't always the case because sometimes the harmonious aspects don't always, they might be harmonious together, but they don't always work out in a harmonious way for the person. So it's not always, I guess I shouldn't say it like that, but if you see a lot of really nice aspects in a natal chart to Juno, then perhaps things are easy as far as notions of fidelity or infidelity go, <laughs> you know, maybe the person is, is, is very faithful. Maybe the person isn't faithful, but somehow they wind up with partners that don't really give a shit or, or, you know, the same thing could be said on the other, on the other end of things, like maybe the partner that they actually need might not be the most faithful of partners, but they happen to be okay with that. This, it really depends on the whole chart, but certainly looking at issues of fidelity or infidelity can be, can be found with, um, with Juno. Um, <clears throat> same thing, like I said, with the, with the partner that you, um, with the type of partner or marriage union that you actually need. Now for that, I would be looking at like, okay, like, like take my own chart. For example, I have Juno in the third house in Aquarius. This means that I probably do need a relationship that some sort of partnership or, or marriage like union that, that does have, that is communicate, 
that does have communication, <laughs> uh, where I'm able to communicate with somebody, probably needs to be in a weird way. <laughs> or it, uh, I probably don't want to sit and talk about, like, uh, which is true. I don't want to sit and talk about regular everyday shit. I don't really want to do that. It's kind of boring. <laughs> I would rather have a, have a partnership with somebody that I could, you know, talk about far out shit, personally. If I had to sit and talk with somebody constantly about what the weather was like, I'd, I'd, I'd drive blunt pencils through my eyes. <laughs> but, um, but, but yeah, so it can kind of, so look at where your Juno falls in your, uh, in your natal chart and see kind of by house. That'll give you like what area of life, um, marriage unions might have a lot to do with or, or need to have a lot to do with or partnerships and um, the, the sign on the cusp of that house or the sign that Juno falls in uh, will kind of, will tell you how, how this needs to manifest. And there are lots of ways you can go with it, you know, lots of different ways. I would also look at, um, since I would also look, okay, so you've got Juno, in my case, Juno is, uh, Juno's an Aquarius. I would definitely look at, um, I would want to look and see if, if Saturn and Uranus make any aspects to Juno. Um, Saturn doesn't, Uranus almost does, but it's kind of wide. Sometimes, um, it almost makes a sextile, but it is kind of wide. I'm not sure I'd count it here. Um, <clears throat> just because it's like, it's four degrees but you want to look at this because this can kind of, if there's a nice harmony between those two, that can also make Juno function more harmoniously in a more harmonious way or in a, or in a, in more of an easy way. If the planetary ruler of Juno in your chart is like squaring Juno or is opposite Juno or something that can also, that can kind of perhaps make Juno function a little bit more in a challenging way. I have seen that happen. Um, I, ha I have seen that happen. Now, another way that you can use Juno, you can obviously use her in transits. You can use her in progressions, you know, uh, like planets, like progress planets or solar arc planets or transit planets hitting Juno. You can certainly look at it that way. Sinistry is probably the biggest way though that I use her really um because if you if, you know if somebody's if somebody's got a planet conjunct your juno that planet of theirs may very well be something that you do need in a in a partnership doesn't have to go that way right there are a lot of different ways that this can go <laughs> there there are especially and also depending on you know if we weren't talking about a conjunction we might be talking about a square and that changes things but um yeah, uh, somebody's yeah, definitely look at what people's planets are doing to Juno. Like, let's say you have somebody's sun conjunct your Juno. That might look really, really nice. And it might be really, really nice. You know, their, their, their ego and their life force is, is very much on the surface with just this one aspect is very much on the surface what you need in a relationship. But then let's say, I don't know, let's say, my, I'm not using my chart as an example, but let's just say like some, but like that person's son also happened to, uh, let's say, okay, let's say that person's, let's say, let's we we'll use my chart as an example. Let's say Juno in my chart wasn't almost sextile Uranus, but it was squaring Uranus. The modern ruler of Aquarius. Let's, let's say it was the sign that it falls in. Let's say that it, let's say that it was square that. So somebody's sun lighting up Juno in that case would kind of also light up that that square between Juno and Uranus, which might not make it quite as comfortable as say if you know you were dealing with the Juno sextile Uranus thing in your own chart. Then somebody's sun lighting that up might be, might be more comfortable. So it does depend on what's going on in your chart <laughs> and 
your chart first and then pulling somebody else's on top of it to see kind of because you know sometimes people will see <clears throat> something conjunct Juno or something trying Juno and they'll be like they'll get really excited about it and sometimes that is it is worth getting excited about and then sometimes there's more to the story that makes it not quite so exciting <laughs> or or adds another layer to it you know this can happen um so definitely definitely make sure that you are taking the planetary ruler of Juno into account when you're looking at your own natal chart or synastry with somebody else um we definitely look at that too um Juno can also be like um Juno can also deal with beauty but more like um like beautiful things she can deal with beautiful things for sure beautiful styling that kind of shit I think I already said uh female sexuality um yeah I think that's pretty good but definitely yeah pull it and see if you're in a relationship definitely pull I would definitely pull um your sinistry and see if uh see what that looks like pull Juno in the sinistry and see kind of what one another's Junos are doing <laughs> you know to one another's charts what's going on for sure definitely 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 all right well I'm gonna get going if you want to follow us on Instagram you can find us at let's fuck with astrology I am at Saturn season astrology on Instagram Natalie is at Paternal astrology on Instagram if you want to like or subscribe or whatever the fuck people do with videos on YouTube you can find us by searching for let's fuck with astrology in the YouTube search bar if you do the Reddit thing, come join us on the subreddit, Let's Fuck With Astrology. And if you're interested in the star cards, go to letsfuckwithastrology.com slash star dash cards. Okay, y'all. I'll see y'all later.